He approaches his one-year anniversary as Vancouver's top cop. We invited Chief Adam Palmer to come into the studio for a chat about how things are going, what your goals are for 2016. And he agreed, and he's in studio. Thank you so much for coming in, Chief. Thanks, Linda. It's my pleasure. Um, there, just to give you a bit of a context, when we're dealing with 420, I'll just explain that one first. That's an event where we get uh, tens of thousands of people, and as you know, that's going from the art gallery down to Sunset Beach, and that's uh, probably a more appropriate venue for it to get it out of the downtown core, and it disrupts traffic and causes problems like that. And in that um, type of environment, we tend to take a more uh, sit back, uh, keep the peace, make sure that uh, you know public safety is looked after, but we don't take an enforcement approach on uh, 420. Cannabis Day, we do look at it a bit differently because Cannabis Day is also the same day as Canada Day, which is July 1st. And you do get a lot of situations where you've got uh, tourists in town, you've got people down there with young families, you've got little kids walking around with their mom and dad, and it's not the same environment as 420. So we don't condone that sort of behavior on Cannabis Day the same that we do on 420. Um, Just to be clear, I mean, it is illegal um, either one of those days, but we do take a different approach depending on the circumstances. Are you okay with uh, 420 moving to Sunset Beach? The Parks Board not happy about it. Yeah, I understand. I get the park board concerns. It totally, it's uh, one of those things that nobody wants to have in their backyard. I, I realize that there's concerns no matter where it's held. But the fact of the matter is uh, it will be held somewhere in the city. I could say there's tens of thousands of people that come down to that event. We've been holding it for decades in the city. And we expect that we'll have another one this year and uh, hopefully not have any problems. So I, I think moving the site to Sunset Beach is actually a good call. Yeah, so the way that we've dealt with the marijuana situation is, uh, you're right, they are illegal. So there's no, um, you know, some people say that it's sort of a gray area, but it is fairly black and white in the fact that they are illegal enterprises. Mm -hmm. But as far as our approach, um, we do take a priority-based approach. So as the chief of police, I do look at the resources I have and the different things going on in the city. And I have to make a decision on where we're going to focus our efforts. And just so people are clear, we have taken enforcement actions on some of those stores. We've done 11 search warrants, but we have not retooled the Vancouver Police Department to go after all 100 stores and focus solely on that because we have so many other things going on in the city that are quite frankly a higher priority like organized crime and fentanyl and heroin, cocaine, methamphetamine, things like that. So marijuana does fall down lower in the pecking order. Um, We will go after them if they are selling to youth or there's an organized crime connection that we can show. Okay, so I know that they're looking at uh, changing the process to make sure that they're far enough away from schools or not selling to minors, etc. And a lot of those dispensaries have not met the conditions. Uh, what happens now? Do you go in and shut them down? How, how long do they have? No, because there's two different things going on in parallel. One is the, uh, the federal government. So the federal government sets the laws for marijuana or drugs in, in Canada. So uh, the federal government, the Liberals, have said that they are going to legalize marijuana. So we're waiting to see how that plays out. What you're talking about there is a regulatory scheme by the city of Vancouver. Mm -hmm. And the regulatory scheme by the city is a different animal. And they're going to try and regulate um, dispensaries and give some, you know, sense to the 100 that we have in the city. And like you say, not a certain um, distance from schools, community centers, from one another, that kind of thing. And that will bring down the numbers dramatically. But that's a city of Vancouver process and not related to the criminal law. So you won't be involved in any way if uh, they're still continuing to operate without proper permits. Yeah, we're still in dis- we are in close discussions with the city. We work very closely with them, but we would still execute search warrants if we do get information that uh, leads us down that road. Well, in Vancouver, we've had a policy for many years where police officers don't attend drug overdoses. So if somebody calls 911 in the city of Vancouver and somebody's overdosed on drugs, police don't go. So the ambulance would go, the fire department would go. The only time the police would go is if the fire department or the ambulance service requested us because of some sort of dangerous set of circumstances. But we don't attend because we want to encourage people to call and we don't want people to be apprehensive about police showing up and doing some kind of a drug investigation. So we've had that policy in place for many, many years and we're very happy with it. Yeah, it's an issue that uh, over the past couple of decades has gotten worse and worse, and police officers spend an inordinate amount of time dealing with people that have mental health issues. Uh, we have tried to be very proactive in Vancouver. We have a very good uh, relationship with Vancouver Coastal Health, which has uh, really been just a fantastic uh, relationship. Um, we are trying to be very proactive. So instead of just responding to calls and waiting till somebody calls us about an issue where somebody's out of control, suffering from a mental health issue, we have officers now where we look at the data, we look at the people that we deal with on a regular basis that are having some sort of a mental health crisis. 
And if they're coming into contact with the police all the time, then we re- reach out to those people proactively. And we have officers in plain clothes that work with mental health professionals. We'll visit them in SROs in the downtown east side or anywhere in the city for that matter. And we just check in with them. We make sure that they're staying on track, taking their medication, making sure that they're talking to their counselors. And if they're not, then we can drive them to see their counselors. Sometimes the mental health professionals can give medication right at the door. Wow. But Or sometimes we'll take them to the hospital if they've decompensated to the point where they really need help. But in the past, a lot of these people would be in their rooms without any supports whatsoever. And now we do it proactively to keep them on track and help them out. Police officers get very good training in Vancouver and other parts of British Columbia using uh, critical incident de-escalation methods, so talking people down from dangerous situations, uh, using less lethal methods of force, so not just resorting to firearms. We have a whole bunch of different tools in the toolkit that we can use. But really this proactive approach is very helpful because when you give the example of you know a police officer or somebody having to shoot somebody mm-hmm. or use force, the question that I always ask is that, well, why did that person end up in a laneway at 3 o'clock in the morning and we had to use force on them? What happened to that person six months ago or a year ago that got them to that point? So that's why I think some of the proactive stuff is good and working with the mental health professionals and helping people stay on track because it's pretty sad some of the circumstances you see people in that have gone off track and they've lost track of their loved ones and they've got nobody to turn to. And sometimes the police and the mental health workers are the only ones there for them.